Welcome to Learning Mole. This is lesson number eight in our subtraction for kids. And we are in the sort of key stage two, um, from say seven, eight year olds to 11, and we are actually going to look at column subtraction. So again, we're moving into the more written, the more formal methods for subtraction when the numbers are a bit too big for the children to work out mentally or on a number line or using their cubes. Um, you don't really want to be um, starting to use cubes for this. Um, it's probably fine for a blank number line, but we want to start to get into the more formal methods of actually written um, subtraction. So a very, very easy one to start off with, just to go through the process. I know um, subtraction and addition have changed a lot since when I was in school, so it's good just to see how it's going on in schools or how children are being taught it. Um, in the current education system. So it's all about tens and units. If you want to write tens and units up there for your child, if they're only really starting their journey and you want to help them, it's sometimes good to have this. You won't be using this method until your children or your child is quite secure with their tens and units because you don't want to confuse them. So once they are um, secure with their tens and units, this will be a method that they will be able to use quite quickly and efficiently. So we're looking, we always start with the units. So we start with the units first and we take away the top number from the bottom, because the biggest number um, on the top. Um, and it's always important to tell them that the biggest number must go on the, on the top. So seven take away three gives us four and they write their four down there. That's their units completely done. And then their tens, four take away one, which is three. And that's a really simple, basic column subtraction but again, my biggest key point would be to remember that the biggest number goes on top because children very, very quickly sometimes just write down the question and they have the numbers reversed and they wonder why they can't do it. But um, that's basically the key point you want to pull out of this. So moving on to more difficult numbers when actually the children may actually have to borrow that they don't actually have enough in their units. So they have to do something slightly different. So if we're looking at something like uh, 83 take away 24, okay, you've got your tens and your units again. It's the exact same method, although we want to talk about this time about borrowing. And I would actually have this discussion with my child before starting. Um, I tend to discuss this with my children in my class and my own children um, before we actually even talk about this. So I would give them a little analogy, like you go to the shop, you've got 20p, you want to buy something for 25p, but what happens? The shop man will say you don't have enough money or the shop lady will say you don't have enough money. You don't have enough. That is the key aspect that we want to get into children's minds for this. You don't have enough. So what do you do? You go to your mummy, you go to your granny, you go to your uncle, you ask, can I borrow 5p? And that's essentially the idea that we want to get into their head for column subtraction. You don't have enough so you need to borrow. So we'll talk through it in terms of that little story. So you've got three in your units, but you need to take away four. Have you got enough? If you've got three sweets, can you give four people one? Or if you've got three P, can you give four P? No, you don't have enough. So that's what you need to actually get your child to think about. First of all, do I have enough is the main question they need to ask themselves. And if they don't, then they immediately, they need to talk about borrowing. So I don't have enough. I need to borrow from the tens. Okay, so they'll cross it out and they'll write seven there to say they've borrowed one. They've taken one way. And they're going to add that 10 into there. So 10 plus three is 13. So they've pulled a 10 across. So this is now not three anymore. This is 10 plus three, it's 13. They've got 13 and they need to take away four. Is that now enough? Yes, I can do that. So 13 take away four is nine. Back onto the tens, seven tens take away two tens. Can I do that? Yes, I can. There's my answer. It's really, really, really important as well that you actually enforce to your child that this is tens, this isn't eight, it is 80. This isn't two, it is actually 20. So just they have that nice basic understanding of place value in there. So I'll do just another one, just to talk you through it again. Um, pretty simple once you get started. The biggest mistake children will make is they will start borrowing when they don't need to. So I would always say, this is the first question you need to ask yourself. Do you need to borrow and why? 
and actually get them talking because once they talk through it they can see it themselves and then they feel more confident as they go along so say um 136 take away 79 okay so you've got this time you've got hundreds tens and units okay so you go to your units first of all six take away nine do you have enough no i don't have enough i need to borrow where do you borrow from the next column so you borrow one from here that leaves you two and now you move your one over here or your 10 and that gives you 16. you could write 10 there but then it gets very confusing and the children think it's 106 and you end up with loads of numbers everywhere so we always just use the one so 16 take away nine is five okay nine tens two take away seven do you have enough no don't have enough again so i'm gonna to have to borrow now from the hundreds that leaves me with zero in there and now i've got 12. again it's 12 tens it's 120 take away 70. can i do it yes i can it leaves me with five tens and now i've got zero in the hundreds so i have nothing to take away so i end up with zero so it's really, I feel, column subtraction isn't talked about enough. It isn't discussed enough with children. And children aren't asked why they're doing something or making the decision. And I think that's where they get tripped up because it's like, this is the method, get on with it, let's do it. But maybe they're doing things, they're borrowing, but they don't actually understand why. Um, they're borrowing when they don't need to because they just think everything's borrowing so it's really nice to actually sit down and actually discuss with your child what they're doing and why they're doing it and make sure that they do have that really good basic understanding of the tens and the units and the place value and the different steps involved.